Hey, I'm Skylar Woodward. I'm two-time Moscone Cup MVP, and you're watching Railbirds TV. Hey, Railbirds, Kevin here. All right, more action for you. Nine ball action from the 2020 Derby City Classic. Jennifer Beretta versus Tony Chohan. All right, looks like Tony's going to win that lag. Jennifer Beretta from New York City, sponsored by Predator. And two jump cues and Skyline Billiards. She comes into this match with a single loss or tournament life on the line. Her opponent, Tony Chohan, also known as T-Rex, because he's a freaking monster at the table, comes into this into this match with no losses. All right, looks like we are ready to get this match underway. We are playing a race to nine. Ooh, not off to a very auspicious beginning. It's gonna bring Jennifer to the table. I'd like to give a Thank you to Diamond Billiard Products for putting on this event and allowing us to come in and record these matches for you guys. And also Billiard Shopping Hour. Be sure to go check them out too. Remember to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. If you don't ring that bell, you won't get notified when we go live and, and when we upload new videos. And we got plenty more Derby City matches coming up. You would want to miss them. And share. Share like it's kindergarten. Host Kevin Ross. And yeah, Jennifer came up just a hair short if she was trying to get out to the middle of the table, which I think she was. I don't think she was playing with that gap between the three five. That would just be silly. All right, good hit. You guys might remember Jennifer from the TV show, The Hustlers, or maybe the movie Nine Ball. I've seen both. I was entertained by both. Yes, the movie Nine Ball, I was entertained by it. It was a terrible movie, but I was entertained. It wasn't Jennifer's fault. She was fine in the movie. My favorite part of the movie was right in the middle of the movie. Uh, Jeanette Lee launches into a full-on commercial for the APA. <laughs> right in the middle of the movie. Freaking hilarious. All right, T-Rex getting that first game. one nothing in this race to nine. Let's go over the rules real quick. We're playing Derby City Rules 9 ball. It's going to be rack your own. The break is the winner's option. You don't have to break. You can pass it to the other player. 
even though we are racking, doing rack your own, the nine on the break is still going to be a win in all six pockets out there. Jump cues are not allowed. If you want to jump the ball, you must use your full playing cue. Uh, break cues, uh, you can't use a break cue either. It's got to be your playing cue. And a three foul rule is in effect. Also, three point break rule is in effect. What that means is on the break, you must drive a minimum of three balls either into the pockets, past the head string, or any combination thereof. Failure to do so is an illegal break. You will lose your turn at the table. Even if you made two balls on the break, if you don't get a third ball past the head string, you don't get to keep shooting. The incoming player will have the option to accept the table as is or pass it back. And if they pass it back, you will not have the option to push out on an illegal break. All right, so that was a nice break by Tony. He's got a nice layout here. Six ball could be a bit of a problem. I don't know. Is that six going to the side? I think the six goes in the side. Doesn't go to either of those two upper corners on screen. So also we are breaking from the break box and the nine ball must be racked on the spot. It doesn't mean the nine's at the front of the rack. It means the whole rack is shifted forward. way through this rack. Oh my goodness. Wow. Didn't see that coming. All right. Slow it down just just the tiniest bit, Tony. Think one extra practice swing uh, might have been called for. All right, Jennifer says, thank you very much for that gift. Keep them coming. And you can hear on the loudspeaker. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, making the announcement that you may not jump with your break cue. You must use your playing cue only. Your full playing cue. In case you have like a three-piece playing cue, no, you can't break it down. So early, this is a round four match. And earlier I said Jennifer has one loss and Tony has zero losses. You might be thinking, well, how can they be playing each other? Aren't they on different uh, sides of the bracket? Tony would, wouldn't Tony be on the A side and Jennifer on the B side? No, that is not how it works at Derby City. Derby City is uh, basically single elimination with a option two for a rebuy. So you can, you can use up to one rebuy per tournament. So every round, they'll shuffle all the names of everyone who is still in and pair them off at random. They'll play the round, and then of the people who won that round, of course, they get to move on, and if they lost, and if they still have a rebuy available, and if they rebuy, they get their name also put back in and shuffle them up again and pair them off at random. Semi-random. Uh, the system is smart enough, so you won't play the same player twice. And if there's an odd number of players in a round, somebody will be getting a buy. Uh, it's even possible to get a buy right into the finals. In fact, that's... Uh, Usually how it works. Usually one person will get a buy into the finals. 
Um, what I was saying was, if there's an odd number of players in the round, someone will get a buy, and the system is also smart enough that uh, a sing uh, one person will not get a buy twice until everyone has had a buy. So, semi-random. It's not truly random because if it was truly random, you might play the same person twice, the same person might get a buy twice, etc. Nice opening shot there by Jennifer. Playing a safe, and unfortunately for Jennifer, that's going to leave Tony straight into the side. Three balls right there. Three to the four shouldn't be a problem as long as he maintains proper angle on the three, which he should be able to. Oh, maybe not. He's coming a little far on the three. Okay, he's going to play for the four in the side. I thought he would be playing for the four in the corner, but I guess the four does go on the side. On screen, it looks like it might be kind of a thin hit, but I mean, like a like a small opening to the side is what I mean. But it's pretty deceiving on screen, at least to me. I know a lot of you people out there in the audience are going, what, what, what are you smoking? Of course he's playing for the side back, and he's straight in. All right, don't, and speaking of straight in, <laughs> don't get straight in. Leave yourself some angle, which he has. All right, nice stroke. I don't think Tony's going to be making that same mistake again on this nine ball. Center of the pocket, as expected. 2-1, race to nine. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, yeah, Jennifer has used her rebuy already. That was uh, in round three when she lost to uh, Michael Yednak. All right, Tony with the break. I hit him solid. Nobody home. Yeah, now with these new racking and breaking rules, you know, the nine on the spot, breaking from the break box, most of the players have uh, gone to a cut break in order to try to make the one on the side. A few players still go for the, you know, hit them square and hit them hard uh, strategy with mixed results. I know... Uh, Last year, John Brumbach was using that approach and making ball on the break every time and and usually getting the shot. So that was actually working out pretty well for him. But most players that, you know, go with the hit them square and hit them hard strategy, most of the time they're not making a ball on the break. And there's, you know, no pattern racking rule. And that also means the two ball should be placed at random in the rack. The two ball should not be placed at the back of the rack every time. 
the two balls should be placed at random every time so that uh, to randomize where the two balls going. So if you're if you're playing the cut break and you're making the one in the side, the two balls, the ball you'd be playing position on. So that should be placed at random in the rack so you can't predict where it's going. See, so make it harder to play position on it. So that's the reasoning behind these rule changes. The racking and breaking rules is just to make it so that uh, it's not automatic anymore that the wing ball's going in and you're playing position on the one. I'm trying to make it a little bit harder, randomize things a bit, bring some randomness back to the game. Because he's, yeah, you can blame Corey Duel for that. Uh-oh. Well, I don't think he has a shot to the side. And did he get her? So when I say I'm not sure if he has a shot to the side, the rule they play at Derby City well, one, if you're frozen to the ball, you can shoot through it. I believe that's the rule they still have. I believe the Derby City rule is uh, if you're frozen to a ball, you can just shoot with a level Q and shoot through it. But even if you're not frozen, as long as you elevate 45 degrees, it's a legal hit. Even if you do double hit it, and even if the Q ball does go forward, as long as you're elevated 45 degrees, it's considered legal at, at Derby City. That's one of the Derby City rules. Nice shot there, Jennifer. Position on the six isn't ideal, so you have to come with another nice shot. But actually, this one should be uh, I don't know, equal difficulty to that five ball. So if you can make the five, theoretically, you should be able to make the six. Maybe the five was a little easier because you were closer to it. And you weren't bridging off the rail. Don't know if there was that phone ringing that uh, distracted Jennifer or just wasn't comfortable with the shot, but either way, she's reset. Pulls the trigger and that's in. Get out of there, cue ball. Whew. Nice shot. Perfect angle on the eight, just ever so slightly off straight in, and she's off straight in on the good side, so it's going towards the nine. Man, it sure looked on screen that she was off straight in, but yeah, that cue ball didn't budge, so she was straight. it up to a piece in this race to nine.
So apparently Jennifer was a fitness competitor before becoming a professional pool player. And being fit does does help your pool game. Absolutely it does. Because these long turn, these long days, day after day at, a, at one of these big tournaments, it is very grueling, and being in shape really helps. Oh, look at that nine ball. I think we're going to be seeing Tony take a splash at the cash here. And there it is. Nice shot. Good cue ball, too. All right. Tony regaining the lead. Three to two. Race to nine. Tony's probably best known as a one pocket player. Don't you worry, you can play a little nine ball too. All right, he's made a ball, got a really nice spread. He did not make a ball. I heard a ball going. I think that was on the other table. I heard a ball, but it must not have been this table. All right, good opportunity for Jennifer here. Nice shot on this one to get started with. Position on the two shouldn't be a problem. Three does go in the side right between that five, six. And the stop shot on the three gets you to the four. Stop shot on the four gets you to the five, right in the side. So looking pretty good, this rack. Yeah, set the cue ball go forward a little bit. Now she's going to be cutting the three a little. Cue ball's going to be going away from the four. She may just roll this in, take the longer shot on the four, because all she has to do is shoot a stop, sh stop shot on the four. Or she may choose to try to go three rails around back to the middle of the table, but no, nah, I'm just going with option A. Just take the longer shot on the four, because all you got to do is shoot a stop shot. There's a little gap between those two, so she might be okay. She's looking at the six now, so okay, she's okay. Whew. She was just... 
Yeah, she's she's still planning her run out, so she's not hooked. Okay. Yeah, and this thing I just rolled it in. Cue ball basically frozen on the rails. I'd rather have that angle than than coming out. And the reason I say I'd rather have the angle where the cue ball is close to the rail as opposed to coming out is because uh, when you when you shoot the six in, that cue ball is going to be going into the rail very close to that side pocket, and sometimes the you know the the facing on the rail can kind of uh, affect the the way the cue ball rebounds off there in kind of a unsatisfactory way. But unfortunately, she got straight in on the six and just has to take the long shot on the seven. That's about all she could do there. Oh, swish, center of the hole, perfect on the eight. That's a great shot, Jennifer. Fetching her extension. Yeah, after some of the tough shots she's made, this nine, even though she got a little out of line on the li on the nine, should be a hanger compared to some of these shots she's been making. All right, good out, three three. Jennifer with the break. All right, she's made a couple and she has a shot on the one. The two and the three are gone, the four is next. So pretty nice break, a little bit of a tester on this one to get started with. Not just making the one, but getting position on the four and maintaining a favorable angle to get back to the six. Shot. 
This looks nearly straight in. We have to just draw straight back for the six in the bottom left corner. Does she have any angle? I don't know. Before I thought she had angle and she was dead straight in, so I'm not going to say one way or the other whether she has any angle or not. deciding to play for the combination. And actually, I like where this cue ball is because it looks like that six is going to go to the left a little bit, and if she goes forward, you know, the cue ball is going to go to the right, so she'll be playing position for that six to that upper left corner on screen next. a little bit to help widen your angle. This looks perfect. And yeah, you'd maybe like to be a little closer, but she should be able to handle this. Actually, she's not real tall. If she was any closer, she might not be able to reach it, so that's probably perfect for her. Being able to reach the ball is more important than the cue ball being closer to the object ball. All right, nice break and run by Jennifer Beretta. Regains the lead, four to three. We have a nice little battle going on here. What do you think? Hill Hill? I think we're going Hill Hill. On the uh, the template rack we are using is the AccuRack provided by Outsville, and they are mandatory for the nine ball event. But strangely enough, not for the bank bowl event, which also uses nine balls racked in a diamond pattern. Go figure. One in the side, two in the corner, and that ball's going to come out perfect for the three. That's a nice break. So three to the four shouldn't be a problem. Five to the six, and then back to the seven. That's where it gets kind of interesting. I mean, when I say three of the four shouldn't be a problem, uh, I'm assuming she can draw to the rail and then back to the middle of the table. Unless she has some angle to kind of stun off of it. She might have angle to stun off it. She did. Okay, she had some angle. Whoa, slow down, cue ball. And now she'll be forced to go to the end rail and back towards the five. A little 
little too much angle to hold it. You just want to make sure you stay inside of that five ball so that uh, yeah, a little bit of check up, check them up English there. You know, they say stay inside of that line like she's done so that uh, the cue ball isn't going into the seven ball. Well, they didn't really want to have the cue ball frozen on the rail like that. Kind of complicates things slightly. line. Nice shot there. And I can't tell, I can't even tell what angle she has. If she has to uh, come short side of the seven or if she can stay on the long side. Looks like she has to go short side. Or run right into the seven. Yeah, so obviously she did not have the angle to um, stay on the long side of the seven. So, yeah, she might have been better off just, you know, hitting at more of a stun shot instead of a follow shot for just display position on the short side of the seven instead of trying to run into the seven because you never know where these things are going to end up and she's ended up kind of you know on the wrong side of this so this is she's going to work a little bit to get on this eight Could try to play safe, but the safety's tough, the shot is tough. Yeah, just cut it in. She's proven to be a pretty damn good shot maker, so I kind of like her chances of cutting this in. Oh. Beautiful shot. Wow. What a shot. Five three. Race to nine. So that was another uh, break and run. So that's two in a row, right? She's starting to put together a little bit of a package here. Let's see, see how far she can take this. Oh, I thought that four was in. Dry break. All right, that's going to be the end of her run. To see her, I wanted to see her run another one. Of course, I know Tony didn't want to see her run another one. All right, Tony, your turn. Although the table's wide open, except for this, 
looking for this 1-6. I mean, you could play the combination, but the cue ball's going up and down table through traffic. You can try to play the billiard, but where's the one ball going? Actually, if you play the billiard, uh, you can probably play position for the one in the side pocket. And I think he was playing safe. I don't think he was playing the one. I mean, I don't think he was playing the 1-6 the combo. I think he was uh, playing safe. cue ball. It did. It listened. Does Tony have a shot? Well, I think you got to like uh, I think you got to come this way <laughs> with the cue ball. And that's a small target over there to hit. Hit the position play beautifully. It's just that one bobbled out. Uh, don't sweat it, Tony. You wouldn't have liked that shape on the two anyway. Oh, great effort. All right, what's Jennifer do? Go for this combination? Side, you know, the four does help make that a bigger pocket. Didn't need to use the four ball though, just went in clean. And he's got a nice position on the two. Nice, nice shot. Now that three ball. I don't think you can play position for the three in this bottom left corner just because that three, yeah, that's a, unless you're straight in on the three, that's a scratch shot. So either, uh, Got to try to run into the ball, which he's doing. Ah, great shot. Not out of the woods yet, though. Still got to still gotta get on this four. You try to get straight in on the four. You know, try to land over here somewhere for straight in. Or do you try to go uh, kind of like you did on that first shot where you cut the three in the side, you know, bring the cue ball this way. Um. Well, that's an easier way to get there than what I drew. <laughs> so, never mind me. Yeah, I didn't know he could hit that three thin enough to go to the end rail. Obviously, that was the easier way to go.
Hey, got a bit of a tester here. All right, he passed the test. Nice shot, Tony. Rex answers back with a nice run out. Brings the score to within one. 5 4, race to nine. Dry break? That well, looks like a dry break. And a nice wide open spread. What appears to be a pretty decent shot on this one to start. Oh yeah. No problem. A little thin cut. Cue ball up to the middle of the table for the two in the corner. Can't tell if she's straight in, just roll forward, or is she gonna have to, uh, can she come back out for the three in the same pack, or she's gonna have to just roll forward for the three in the side? shape on the three, cut this in, two rails to the middle of the table. The middle of the table is perfect because that leaves her a nice angle to come back around for the five. She came a lot shorter than I was thinking she was going to. I was thinking she'd go a little bit longer. All right, uh, let's kick it in, run out. 
Or can she cut? She can see. Can she see this to cut it? Well, she might be able to see it. Oh, she can see it. Whoa, cue ball. Oh, it did not look to me like she hit it that hard. But she did overcut the five a little. All right, roll forward, seven, foot, seven in the bottom left corner. That's assuming she can get past this tough shot on the six, especially if that six is frozen to the rail. Oh, great shot. Nice run out, Jennifer. Made things a little difficult on herself. But she managed to recover nicely. 6-4, race to nine. Dry break brings Tony to the table with not much of a shot on this one to get started with. Did he get her? I think he got her. Even if she can see the one, it's going to be a kind of a thin hit. It's going to be hard holding the cue ball there for the two, you know, without hooking yourself behind the nine.
Looks like she's kicking. Oh, ride the nine. Hoo-hoo. <laughs> wow. Ball in hand for Jennifer. All right, that five ball is obviously the problem ball here. Now, do you try to break out the five eight when you shoot to three, or do you just leave it there? And just try to get straight in on the five from the four. towards break it out from the three as opposed to trying to get straight in from the four. Especially if she can get the cue ball up on the end rail when, and cut the three in. Solve plenty of angle on the two if that's her plan. And that is her plan. As long as she doesn't get hooked behind the nine, she figures to have a shot on the four. And she hit that perfectly. Opens up the five nicely. She's a nice shot on the four. Good angle to get to the five. I don't think you could have asked for a better outcome. That's perfect. Extension. Center draw. Even the tiniest bit of left spin, you'll scratch in that side over there. So just center draw, come, come across. Unless she's just going to try to like uh, shoot it soft without even using the second rail. Nope, just center draw back and forth. Yeah, if you find yourself scratching in the side pocket on shots like that, it's probably because you put some left spin on it. 
even just a tiny bit left, and you go right in that. You go right in the drink. That's a nice touch. That's ball in hand position. Literally. If you had ball in hand, that's probably about a... Well, look, if you had ball in hand, you'd put it where you could reach it. <laughs> but if you were taller, this would be ball in hand position. Seven, four. Nice out from ball in hand on the one. Jennifer playing near perfect patterns on uh, most of these games. I say near perfect because you know she got out of line a couple times, but a couple times she did, uh, she's been able to recover. Jennifer is playing very good right now. Jennifer with the break. All right, one in the side. Looks like she went with a cut break that time. Changing it up a little because she's not been having much luck on the break. All right, successful break. She's got a shot on the two. Looks like she can go forward for a shot on the three to the corner next. Pretty good to me. Looks like she has just a little bit of angle to work over towards the four ball. You know, five to the six, I think, is going to be key, at least the next key. You know, that two ball is kind of a key shot. I think five to the six will be the next key shot. We'll get off that eight. All right, no problem. I mean, ideally, I think I'd like to be like over here for position on the five to come, you know, this way.
Uh, and that's what Jennifer prefers also. Whoa, cue ball. Oof. sure who's going to. You just play the seven in the side or are you trying to come out? You just play the seven in the side. Tony, here's your chance. Side, like, do I go like high inside or uh, come three rails around? And obviously, decide in option B three rails around. All right, nice little gift there from Jennifer. Tony gladly accepts. Players are going to uh, take a quick break. All right, looks like players are back from break. The nine of the break counts, and yep, everyone's telling them, yep, it counts. Actually, <laughs> one person said, uh, I think so, and then this person just says, yeah, I think it does, we want to make sure. Does nobody know the rules around here? <laughs> yeah, nine on the break counts.
All right, we got confirmation. All right, one more time. <laughs> Almost. It was heading in that general direction. But that looks like that's going to be a dry break. And that leaves that cue ball straight in on the one. Actually, not even straight in. A uh, little bit of angle, which is better than straight in. Looks like she can go like high left and come like short side of that too for the play position for the two in that upper left corner. And that's the path she's looking at right now. And even if she goes a little bit long, she could still play the two in that, in that upper side or even the upper right corner where she's playing the one if she happens to misjudge the angle just a little bit. And she has gone just a little bit long, so as I was saying, she can still play it in the side. Or even, you know, the corner, depending on where she landed. Yeah, basically just gotta get to the middle of the table. Middle of the table is where you want to be for this shot. Whether she can shoot this with uh, just left spin or if she has to go back and forth. She might have to go back and forth. Yeah, she's going back and forth. That looks pretty good to me. Nice shot. Just roll this in. As long as you're not hooked behind the nine, you should be fine. She ended up not exactly ideal. Which might even just, you know, shoot it in soft and, you know, bump the six. Got the six a little thin. Still has a shot though.
looks to me if she just rolls it in, she'll be perfect on the seven, but you know, she's at the table, not me. The angles definitely look different at the table than they do on screen. That much I know. Yeah, she's not getting away with that one. As I was saying before, it looks like it's lined up pretty straight to the corner. Is that aim aimed a little bit to the rail? So it actually looks like it might be aimed a little bit to the side rail. Whether they're frozen or even not frozen, as long as you elevate 45 degrees, it's considered a good hit. Even if the key ball you know, goes forward, it's still considered a good hit at Derby City. Bank to six, like towards the eight, and let the key ball come over to this uh, other side rail. I think that's what she was trying to look like. She may have caught a little bit of a double kiss there. And this is sitting really nicely for her Tony here. Just barely got there. <laughs> nice shot. Perfect. That's good. You don't gotta shoot that. Tony, tying it up. Seven apiece. I'm starting to like my uh, Hill Hill prediction. Ball in hand for Jennifer. That's the uh, three ball is the one near the right side. It's the five ball over near the left side. So two to the three. Four ball shouldn't be a problem if she gets if she gets straight in on the three to either of those two corner pockets. The four ball will 
you know, all she'd have to do is shoot a stop shot in the threes. The four ball would go to the upper side pocket there. Because, of course, the two ball will be gone. Just getting on that three. Could be a little tricky. If you want to play to the corners. And if you want to play for the side, then you got to play for a cut shot. And you're letting the cue ball go a lot more. Trying to get back for the four ball, so... I think I'm preferring playing position for the three to the corner. And I would prefer... Is she looking at three foul? And of course I'd prefer playing position for the three to the left corner. You have so much more room for the cue ball over there on that right side. Well, it looks like she's going to go the other way. an interesting path. Well, she has angle to shoot it in the uh, side now. Man, you gotta, <laughs> you know, all week long I'm hearing cell phones ringing all the time. Yeah, no one seems to care. Beautiful shot. See, we've got a nice angle to come over to this left side rail and then right between that gap for the eight, between the eight nine for the five on the side. All right, the tough stuff's out of the way. Now it's just a matter of staying in line. So, you know, obviously five isn't a problem. Six shouldn't be a problem. It's just, just figuring out what angle she wanted to six because, you know, where do you play the seven? You play for the seven for the side, the seven for that uh, far corner. I mean, I prefer playing for the corner. Actually, from here, she can play for the side. She can uh, come kind of like bring the cue ball like right between the 8-9. She can roll this in soft with some right spin so the cue ball kind of lands right between the 8-9. For the 7 in the side, then you go up and down table for the 8. That's what she's doing. Actually, she's playing for the corner. Hit it even uh, softer than I was thinking.
little bit of angles. Come two rails around. Shouldn't be a problem. This nine to put Jennifer on the hill. Something distracted her. Get up, reset. Wiped its feet a little bit. It found darkness. Jennifer Breda on the hill. On the hill against the monster T Rex, Tony Choham. Jennifer with her almost certainly last break of the match. All right, going with the cut break. And that's going to be a dry break. Dry break, but that 2 4 tied up. And a not easy shot on the 1 either to start with. That's kind of a tough one to hit. Do you go for the the the, the Z bank here, or the Z kick? I mean. She's elevating. She's gonna try to try to mass say around these. Nice hit. She's gonna leave a shot, but the two four is still tied up. I mean, he can try to break it out here. Trying to go two rails into the two, two four. 
zigzag back, you know, bottom left zigzag. He got a shot. All right, she can see the two. But what do you do with it? it like towards the three ball and, uh, and try to get the key ball behind the five. Even if you don't get them hooked behind the five, you know, the three balls blocking the two, so you don't have a pocket anyway. One possibility. Yeah, she's just going for it, I think. Well, whatever it was she was trying, it's not worked out. And has left Tony good opportunity here to tie the score up again for the last time this set. And that's a nice shot. That works. Behind the back maneuver, she's got just a little bit of angle. She's able to draw right past that seven without hitting it, like so. And big bounce, big, big, big bounce. By the way, I root for both players. I root for whoever's at the table. Wow, what a shot. And, on the, and he got position on the five. Hill, Hill, and Tony's breaking. Unfortunately, Tony hasn't been having a lot of luck with the break. Actually, neither player has for that matter. Both players are running out. It's just going to be a matter of which of these two players gets a shot first in this final game. And a lot of that's going to come down to this break. He hasn't been having much luck on the break. Let's see if he can turn it around. Better late than never. Not having a golden break for the final game. 
safe. Look at this. Well, dry break, but <laughs> no shot for Jennifer. All right, where are we pushing out to? And remember, no jump cues allowed. You can jump, but it's got to be full playing cue. No break cue jump either. In case you were thinking about pushing out to a jump shot. Bank the two to the middle of the end rail and leave the cue ball where the two ball is. And just leave them, you know, the long shot on the one with no easy way to get back to the two. I think that's kind of what Jennifer's looking at. Just move the move the two away from the pocket and leave them long on the one. Unless you guys got a better idea. Yeah, that's definitely what she's looking at. Cross the one, bring the cue ball back. He's digging in. He's going to try to draw this. He took a swing at it. And where's this one going to end up? Eh. If you play the combination, you just got to make sure you're not hooked behind the seven. Soft enough? Yes, you can hit it soft enough. And I think she's okay. I think she can cut this in the side and come uh, you know, two, three rails around for the two next. Or even one rail. She can even go one rail straight up and down play position for the two in that bottom left corner on screen. Of course, you know, the one rail up and down, you take the chance of scratching in that upper left corner. You know, you draw it, you know, with left spin, come two, three rails around, come three rails around, you're less likely to scratch. So I think I prefer the, yeah, bottom left, come three rails around. Oh, she shoot it in the corner. Okay.
perfectly happy to take the longer shot. She's maintained a nice angle. It's not, not too thin a cut. She can just kind of roll it in. Cue ball naturally to the middle of the table for the four on the side. And if she gets good on, if she makes a three and gets good on the four, and I've seen no reason why she shouldn't, I'm liking her chances. Ball got away a little. All right. Cue ball back to the middle of the table. Just cut the five in, come two rails around for the seven. Good. Hard-fought battle this match has been. Both players fighting hard. And Jennifer playing like her tournament life is on the line. Because it is. Shots away from defeating Tony Chohan. How's the speed? It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Wow. This nine for the match. And what a match it has been. Jennifer Beretta defeating Tony Chohan, 9-8. What a thriller. Tony still has his buyback option available, so he's not out of the tournament yet. What a great match. If you guys enjoyed this match, be sure to share and subscribe. Ring that bell so you get notified when we upload more of these great Derby City matches. Thank you guys for watching. I am Kevin Ross, Railbirds. See you guys.